The Central Bank of Nigeria has put a limit on cash withdrawals made by individuals and organizations with effect from the January the 9th, 2023. According to the new directive from the CBN, individuals will only be able to withdraw 100,000 naira per week from over-the-counter point-of-sale machines or automated teller machines, while organizations can only access 500,000 naira per week. Withdrawals above these limits will attract a processing fee of 5% for individuals and 10% for companies. Also, the Apex Bank says third-party checks above 50,000 naira will not be eligible for payment over the counter, while ATM withdrawals should not exceed 20,000 naira per day. In addition, only denominations of 200 naira and below will be loaded into the ATMs. Joining us now is the CEO Mukta with uh, Finance with Mukta, Mukta Mohammed. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Now, what is this decision by the CBN? Just after redesigning the naira, Nigerians were trying to adjust to you know the new policy. The CBN throws another one, and it seems it has thrown everyone off balance with the reaction that we are getting, even from the Senate. The Senate is saying, you know, it might reverse uh, the policy and uh, that um, a lot of persons' businesses will be affected and this is not the way to go. So many, you know, reactions coming from this. Yes, hi. We expect it. Like every policy of the CBN has always attracted um, diverse reactions and um, we, are, we expect it. And I know the CBN to expect it to be uh, what it is. But um, the challenge is not about whether the policy is right or wrong. Mm. People are looking at the timing. And the policy is not a new policy. Mm. It's just that there's reduction in limit. So, right. So what is it? You, you know that now before ATM, you can withdraw 150000 Yes. You are now reducing the limit that you can withdraw from the ATM. Mm. Before now, the cashless policies in place, you can only withdraw 500000 naira as an individual Mm. Outside of that, you, are, you have to pay these um, charges if you are doing any withdrawal above that. Even in the area of deposit, it's still even there also when you deposit money also. Mm. If you do excess, I think individual 1 million, corporate 3 million, you will have to pay um, charges. charges. Processing, so, fee. processing fee. But what, if, what we've seen now is that it has been reduced. So what the CBA is trying to say is that, you know what, Let's try to gradually move into this cashless policy. Now, the way, how, the way how they are going about it might not be right, especially like you pointed out, listening to people, the rural areas. Mm. That is our challenge. And the infrastructure. Mm. Do they have the, did the bank have those might to meet this demand? Because you're talking about ATM, not dispensing money. Mm -hmm. So if you tell me I have, to, I have only 20,000 to withdraw, and that's the only money I have to withdraw. And I'm now going to withdraw that money. And again, the, the ATM decide not to pay me back. And I will now have to wait for seven working days. Sometimes 14. To get my money back. And that is my last money I need to do. So the POS has come as a, a financial inclusion measure for the rural people. Yes. Now you're saying they can only do 20000 For that farmer that wants to go and buy goods, he sees the POS terminal as his new means of securing his funds. Mm -hmm. Instead of being as so he goes there to the POS and says, look, I have 100000 That's what I want to use. Now you are telling them, even when you, I give a check of just 50000 naira, they cannot clear it over the counter like it used to be. Mm -hmm. They will have to pay it into an account. You, you look at the whole picture. The financial inclusion is there. But now, some other people will have to suffer. Mm -hmm. And... Those are the people who want to bring into the banking space. So I think it's a, it's a big challenge. But CBN is saying there is going to be a waiver for uh, there's going POS to be op yes a waiver for POS well, operators to apply because theirs is a mobile. Okay, that that kind of, would be that would be nice. Like I said, they, are, they, they they have to reject the policy, reject after Nigerian. Um, I mean, and, and I think I always say policies are not um, to remain the way they is. Stone, they, right. they are not. They are not things that have to be rigid. So definitely there will be some, because a lot of people will look at the POS terminals, that means you are trying to take them out of business, the money agents that banks have created all over the rural area, you are going to take them out of business. So those are part of the challenges. But in, in, the, in, the, in the urban area, 
we've seen that the infrastructure in terms of ATM are improving because the, 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 the banks have gone ahead. Now you have ATM that you can just use your thumb or your face up yes. to withdraw money. Mm. We are beginning to go to cutless, not even cut. So, but how do we transfer this infrastructure to the rural area? That's my greatest challenge. How do we do that? And is even the CBN doing enough at achieving that? Because we're, as we were speaking earlier, we're talking about the level of involvement in terms of educating people, especially the unbanked, to you know, take advantage of whatever the, the banking system is bringing on board. How about even the e -Naira? What have we seen with that? What is the CBN doing? The e -Naira is, 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 I mean, hasn't worked because the CBN said they have to Re redesign it or reject it, like that's always their language. Mm -hmm. uh, because in era, because moreover, you see, Nigerians look at it. You bring, you come with an app mm -hmm. that is still domiciliary with my bank. My bank also have an app. When I have issues of transfer about the in era, I still have to go to my bank to resolve the issues for me. So it was more or less like a duplication of um, a, 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 of a particular a solution that the bank normally already have. Mm. So people feel more continue with my banking app. Other people are coming up with app, banking apps that are even you don't have to go to the bank. Absolutely. You just do it your just resolve right. you just resolve it. So, yeah. yes. so there's a lot of things that were not in the e naira, and so that's why people are always saying that um, the CBN seems like you are competing with the people that you are regulating. So right. by, by coming up with such, um, and you enforce it on the bank that they must have it. And at that time, you were targeting the market women. You were trying to do financial inclusion. But at the end of the day, you realized it was not working because you already give bank, bank and some people agents to become PO stamina and also a, a money agent. You go to uh, a, a, the rural area or you go to the market, you want to buy something, mm -hmm. and you, you see somebody said, uh, oh, God, I want to use the ATM card it's because of the charges. Mm. Those people are trying they will, to. They will, reject, oh, they will say, yes. please, there's a POS okay, terminal here. Yeah. So, uh, business is all about reducing overhead costs, yeah. especially when you are in an inflatory in, 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 uh, economy like we, we are now. Mm. So, definitely, you wouldn't blame the business people. So, the e naira hasn't worked because it didn't bring anything different from what we have in the banking space. But what of the level of awareness because that's the, the see, when it comes people, to yeah. level of awareness i think the cbn have left that with the, to the banks and unfortunately that's what's happening because they expect the bank to 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 enlighten their customers of the benefit of any product that they, they are trying to sell and unfortunately the bank would rather tell their customers the benefit of their own products mm. because even before such a policy is come, come comes out you you need to look at the larger pic the, the larger picture which is somehow very good because when you look at what they are trying to achieve with trying to be cashless, it address security. Mm. Because we are going to go to an era whereby it will not be easy for you to rob anybody. So now, what they are stopping in physical, are they trying to put it in the area of cyber security? That's one that place people are afraid of. Mm. So you are saying, okay, it's not safe for me to be holding cash, and everybody knows, okay, I cannot hold cash any longer. But the greatest threat to the financial sector is cyber security. What are you doing to improve that space? All right. the, a little point when the new Nara notes were announced and, and where they were presented to everyone was, um, you know, terrorists, the report of terrorists demanding that the ransom be paid in the new Nara note. Isn't that what the new Nara note was seeking to achieve? You see, when you look at all the policy, number one, you see CBN have their tools to guide against inflation. And one of those tools is reduce liquidity in the system. When you have a banking system that over 85% of your liquidity is outside the banking space, mm. it becomes a challenge for you to fight inflation using that tool. So that's what the CBN was trying to do with the redesigning of the Naira. And the redesigning of the Naira was targeted at reducing the exchange rate volatility between the Naira and the dollars. Because what the CBN saw was that the Nairas that were chasing the dollars, that was making the, the dollar batter the Naira, were not in the banking space. They were outside the banking space. So they were trying to, they are trying to bring those Naira into the banking space. Then the economic terms of demand and supply will come to play. Now, that was the same thing um, in terms of security also. You know, ransom were paid in millions, cash were carried in millions to these people, and they in turn changed it to dollars and everything. Now, 
what you are trying to achieve security-wise could endanger the victims when they begin to ask for the new Naira note. In short, in some areas, they've gone as far as say they will be asking for dollars. And some of them are even saying, you know what, they will, in, in the Lake Chad region, where the terrorists normally operate, there was a report that came in that they've stopped asking for Nigerian note. They are now asking for SEFA from the Nigerians. So hmm. in the short term, it could look like a big challenge. But in the long term, what will this address? It will address inflationary project, um, um, uh, pressure. It will address money laundry because a lot of money laundry are perpetrated by cash. Hmm. Because they know that if you perpetrate that through the banking space, when you are caught, they will be able to investigate it. So most of these things are perpetrated by cash. So, so money back politicians should be afraid, really? Uh, like they? people said, and that is why most Nigerians will not take the National Assembly serious because National Assembly is trying to intervene now. People see it's it like a, another it's tool. It's in their own interest. It's, it's another tool to cough uh, vote buying. Mm. Because you, you are saying, now, uh, oh, okay, at January 9th, you can no more have so much cash at home to distribute at polling booths. And most Nigerians will not trust you to tell us, okay, when I vote for you, I will transfer the money to your account. <laughs> so that also could be an added advantage and reduce the pressure on ANEC. Right. But like I always say, politicians also are ingenious. They're also looking That's for it. ways to beat everybody. <laughs> what this policy is coming, people are coming with ways, how can we beat this policy? So that is why I'm saying that the bank need to up their game. CBN need to up, not just by threatening the bank. You need to be asking the bank, what have you built in the area of cyber security? Whereby people sit at their home and their ATM are cloned and used outside the shore of this country. Mm. So people see that uh, banks, uh, we have had issues where banks even have been compromised by staffs in the bank. Absolutely. So what are you doing to improve cyber security since we are going to cashless? Because the greatest challenge in a cashless society is cyber security. Absolutely. Now, uh, let's get back to, you mentioned something earlier that uh, this move on the long run is to curb inflation and all of it. But how does this address the matter of the value of the Naira? Well, value is not driven by how good your currency looks. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, um, like a person, you look, it, it looks very beautiful inside and outside. it lacks character. <laughs> Who wants mm -hmm. to associate with that person? So mm -hmm. value is not driven by how good your currency looks. It could attract people to your currency, but again, what will what what makes your currency what is it is the what your currency can purchase, mm. the purchasing power of your currency comparable to other currencies. Mm. So when we are looking at value, and sometimes people uh, um, 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 value systems change over time. Now, when you are looking at the currency, what the CBN is looking is look, we might not be able to address value in the short term. Like I said, in the long term, mm. they are using that to tackle inflation. Mm. So in the long run, we are using an administrative tools that we have control over to see how we can guide against inflation and also how we can bring stability to our exchange rate. The, the bottom line of all these policies, one is security, two is uh, monetary. Now, why are they doing that? If you look at it, every policy that CBN has brought in has not been able to keep up to the momentum is that because of security. Mm. So what we are saying is that security is not in the control of CBN, but because the physical side that is supposed to take care of security is not, so they are indirectly dabbling into those sites to address those security challenges so that their policy will begin to make, improve the life of Nigerians and the economy. Mm. Because Economy and security work hand in hand. Yeah. So when you have a good economic policy and you're not able to guide against the security challenges, nobody wants to come to your country because they think your country is not secure. As it stands now, the major challenge of the Naira is not just in the value that we are not being able to earn so much in terms of uh, any, our earning capability. The other one is that we have not been even been able to attract investors into our economy. And you only attract investors into your economy based on physical policy, not only monetary policies. Mm. Is, is CBN even still acting within its, its mandate or have they descended to the level of, of banks? Like only yesterday we had a, a, a top personality who was you know, speaking to us in that regard in his reaction to, to this policy that maybe the incoming administration may just need to find a way to uh, rewire the framework of CBN. Exactly. And you know why CBN is doing that? It's because you do a policy, monitoring policy, and the physical side is not doing anything about it. There will not be a result. 
we have said it that CBN have left its, its man core mandate, which is regulatory mandate for the banking sector and also monetary policies. But like I said, in every economy in the world, when the monetary policy comes in, the physical side will come and synergize with the monetary policies. But what we see in Nigeria is that there's a monetary policy, then there's not a physical side. What is the Asian of CBN doing uh, 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 um, um, a lot of programs like direct intervention in the textile industry, the, the, uh, um, the farmer, um, a lot of things that they are doing that are not within their own um, 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 mandate. mandate. But they have to do it because you, you want to pump money into an economy and you want to be in control of it, but it's not done because they want to be in control because the physical side is not doing anything about it. Physical side comes up with policy. Let me give you the case of the, like the United Kingdom. Everything we are doing here, the United Kingdom are doing. They are raising hike, gasoline are going up. But the physical side, you look at the monetary side and you look at how to the impact the on your citizen, then how to cushion the effect. The UK came and said, look, in terms of power, we are going to winter. Power costs will be high. So we will now begin to cushion the effect on power. So we'll be paying for every household a certain amount of their fee for power. That touch both the rich and the poor and industries. Now, you come to our own cushioning effect. But isn't that what led to Liz Truss's removal? They, no, no, they, did, no, no, they no. didn't it, like it. it, it it's, when you look at our own removal, it was that they were trying to reduce taxes, mm. which is like, which is the core revenue drive there. So when you reduce taxes, how can we end to begin to, to, to pay those households more? So you are then, then coming down with the economy. But, but when you look. Real. Yes. Now, in our own. The only subsidy they are doing for us is petroleum subsidy. Mm. And that subsidy is not helping the poor. Because for the past one week or two weeks, we have... Uh, where, uh, Three weeks, actually. Yeah. We've True. had a um, shortage of petroleum products. True. And the poor are the ones suffering because transportation has gone up. Mm. So in our own subsidy, instead of bringing soak up to the poor, our own subsidy is even worsening our situation because our own subsidy is not even adding... To our own, uh, I mean, um, um, to our... To cushion the effect. To cushion the effect. The and also right. add to our national treasury. Yeah. Rather, for the past eight months, NMPC have not been able to redeem a dime to the, Fed, to the Federation account mm -hmm. that could be shared to the Treaty of Government. And what, do, what that means is that we are not able to earn enough dollars whereby people that are even genuinely need this money cannot get it. So access. that is why you see those exchange rate volatility. Mm. Now, th there are those who said that um, perhaps this could have an implication on taxes and taxing. Talk to us on that. I think that that could, that could. But the taxing we are talking about is that we've said it over and over. Tax in a modernized economy is not used only for revenue. Mm. It's used to grow the economy. And when you're talking about growing your economy, you are not only looking at GDP, you are looking at job creation. Our own tax system in Nigeria is where towards revenue, revenue, revenue. Once somebody is not paying revenue, you, you kill that person. person. Mm. You are not looking at the value system. You are not looking at, okay, can we attract foreign investors into our economy? Can we give them realistic tax holidays, not political tax holidays? Right. We are looking at tax as a way to grow our economy, to attract investors, to bring in their funds into our economy, to create jobs for our youth, which we are made to make that about 70 to 80 percent of Nigerian youth are unemployed. The kind we are of not... tax that will go across board, but not just now, for the Now, you're talking about tax in this sense now. Mm. How much is this policy going to attract the informal sector? Mm. The formal sectors are already paying tax. Yes. But majority of Nigerian businesses are in the informal, informal. sector. Mm -hmm. And the informal sector is beginning with a lot of challenges that the government has not helped them address. Power, road. And sometimes they come together to begin to see how they can solve this problem themselves. And now you want to put another tax burden on them. But if you are a government, you are doing what you do. They see the roads are good. They see they have power. That is reducing their overhead tax. That is you are attracting the informal sector into your economy. The informal sector, at that time, you can say, look, you are making X, Y, X, Y. You need to pay tax. And they will see reason for them to pay tax. So I'm not saying that it's good to do tax invasion. But what I'm saying in essence is that for you to attract the informal sector, which will 
we, we increase the revenue base in our tax bill. You need to bring something to the table for them to see that you are helping their business grow, either with policies. Mm -hmm. you, now, this policy now, you see that the people that will be more affected, again, if you say you want to go to revenue, are they already, already the people that are paying taxes? Yeah. Because when Nigerian government say we are widening the uh, tax, tax net, net. they are going after people that are already paying tax, whether they are paying the real tax. They are not thinking of attracting more oh. people into the tax bracket. Mm -hmm. But you need to say, right from um, Fowler time to the current um, boss of FIRS, FIRS, they've been able to achieve little, but they can do more. And it's not in their own power to do so much. If the government, remember there was a time in Lagos State where you see a road, and you see taxpayers' money at work. Mm. So how many, what we are seeing, that what we are seeing at work in Nigeria now is PPP. And what does PPP say? We are seeing companies tax at work because you are giving those companies tax holidays while they are constructing those roads. What is taxpayers' money doing? The taxpayer will need to know. And you see a government that you are saying, okay, we are in taxes, we are improving taxes, your own luxury hasn't come down. You are telling people to pay more tax, and the people are saying, no, do we pay more tax to increase your luxury? Because we see you moving with seven cars, we see you moving with eight cars, our taxes are the one for in those, those, those cars. So the whole idea should be, it will help, but is it going to help them capture the informal sector? Mm. Because the informal sector, 70% or 80% of Nigerian businesses are not in the formal sector. They're in the informal sector. That woman that is selling in the kiosk, mm. how do you tell him to begin to pay tax? That's that barber, how do you tell him to begin to pay tax? You know, that transport system, how do you come to make sure that the transporters, they begin to pay tax? When you are able to bring those people into the tax bracket, then you mm. widen your revenue base naturally, and then you are able to provide amenities for them. They will be ready to pay okay, tax. Okay, so what, what would it be, you know, justiciable or, or justifiable for, you know, these informal people who have been set to even be the ones driving the economy? As in, what's the justification for taxing a market seller, for, for, for example? As in, how do, you, how do you even state it to her? How do you even say it in a language she understands? How do you value whatever it is she's right. selling? How? And, how? And that, 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 see, that is where cashless comes to. And so, ordinary, every business all over the world when you go to the developed nations, no matter what you are selling, you are able to be taxed because there's a penalty. All right. Mm. You see, every rule we have here is the same rule they have in the developed economy. But why are they doing it in the developed economy and are not doing it here? It's because there is a price to pay. And you can even when, track. Yes, when you are not doing it. Now, how do you justify... We'll soon go to the political appointees, maybe be to make ministers or people that are coming to Senate, and you see their tax payment. They are paying 70,000 naira, 50,000 okay. naira. And nobody is going after them. Yeah. And then the ordinary man that is earning 100,000 that is not paying enough tax, those people that are working in the in England, you are companies. going after them. Right. And the politicians will easily come up Isn't with tax deliberate? returns. Isn't this deliberate? It is deliberate. That is why it has not been easy for us. To, because what we see in Nigeria is that the tax system favors the rich than the poor. Now, in other developed countries, yes, you see where the tax system favors the rich. But that is in the value that the rich add to the economy. They are not taxed based on the value they add to the economy. Yet, the, under, uh, on, uh, the poor are adding something to the economy and they are being taxed. Why the rich that is is adding something to the economy and gaining from the economy is not tax at all. Wow. Mm. Uh, Nigerians are also complaining about these charges. Uh, isn't it time to also review it? Okay, even the in, bank the, charges. in the bank charges, in the processing fees, as in if, if my money, I want to access more than the limits CVN has now You're imposed. asking for 5% and, 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 or 10% as and the I case have may to, be. And I have to do that. Bank charges, you know, you know the list is endless. If you see the CBN said the benefits of cashless, From, okay. Mm will be bank charges will come down. Hopefully, let's see how it we goes. We need... But definitely, because it's becoming if you look at the bank balance sheets, most of their non-interest revenue has come from a cashless policy. So it's still advantageous to the bank. Against. Now, why is it like that? Infrastructure, maintaining cashless infrastructure is not cheap. Mm -hmm. 
So that is, if you want to, those charges to come down, you as the regulator, CBN, how are you helping the banks to bring in these infrastructures? Do we go to custom now and say, look, if an ATM platform is coming to Nigeria, remember these things are not even done yet. Some of these machines are not done yet. So if it's coming, do you reduce taxes on them so that in, in turn, will now reduce the charges Charges. that they charge on people. Mm. So the problem is that it's expensive to maintain this cashless process. They are talking about cyber security now. Cyber security is not cheap. It's not. So they have to charge individuals because they said, okay, they are charging you for the convenience. Instead of you driving your car to the banking space, going through the traffic, queuing, you are now saying, okay, you can do it to the comfort of your own. But there comes the charges for that. Mm-hmm. Now, what are we going to do? Will we reduce those charges? We can reduce those charges by competition. I expected the CBN to say, look, you know what? We'll have ATMs that will be all over Nigeria, mm-hmm. driven by CBN, but you can withdraw whether you belong to Bank A and Bank B, and charges will not be paid. So he could to act, encourage to people. encourage both people to go cashless. Mm-hmm. Most of the rural people, why they don't go cashless is because they are the looking charges. at that charges. They say, ah, when you calculate it, it's a lot. It is a lot for them. them. Yeah. And that's why we just made an example of the market woman. When you go to you want to buy, you say, okay, and you say, ah, ATM is not working. Mm. <laughs> and you say, ah, why? He said, uh-huh. before you say, before you are saying that, you said, okay, don't worry. They say, yeah, 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 buy. Buy. Yeah. They, they, they are more confident in the PO because the PO is going to give them cash. Mm. But again, what we are seeing in CBM policies, which I think that's what I'm saying, like, it's a measure to control inflation. The deposit, the deposit um, l- limit has not changed. The charges on deposit have not changed. What the CBN is concentrating on. That's is a no brainer. Draw. So bring the money. Bring, bring the, the money. money. Bring the money. But when the money comes, so it's a tool <laughs> that they are trying to use to control inflation. But again, some people are ch- going, can go to court to challenge it mm, and say, it's challengeable. Look, it's my money. I have a right to do where I want. Legitimately, I have a right to want to spend the money as long as I'm not doing money laundering and uh, all those acts. Now, but in developed economy, we must, we sometimes, you know, in Nigeria, we start comparing ourselves in this, but in developed economy also, there's a limit to how much you can withdraw. Mm. If you have, like in the US, you have an account that normally they see just get only $5,000, $1,000. The day they see $10,000 in that account, they will flag Red it. Flag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nigeria, somebody is having only 10000 uh, 10, 10, and all of a sudden, his account reached $2 million, $3 million, and everybody is celebrating it. All the bankers begin to go after him, and you bring more. So that's a challenge. All right, let's see how things span out in the coming days and uh, the meeting the Senate is going to have with uh, these persons. You see, see, when you talk about meeting between the Senate and the CBN government, you should know they should always remember se- uh, separation of power. Mm. You, the, you are a legislative arm, we have, the, we have the executive arm, and we have the judicial arm. Mm. This is purely an administrative executive. tools in the hands of PBM mm. to the CBN Act. Mm. All you need to do is to ask them why these policies, remember, remember even the redesigning of the Naira, they made all the whole noise. Mr. President said, I'm aware of it. And I'm sure Mr. <laughs> President is aware of this, so nothing will happen. All right, let's leave the conversation here now. Uh, fin- CEO of Finance with Mukhtar, Mukhtar Mohammed, thank you for your time. Pleasure. Thank you.